Happy New Year, everyone, and thank you for joining us on the program. I am Nifemi Yoguntoye. President Bola Tinubu is back in the nation's capital, Abuja, after spending some days in Lagos for the holiday. It's now signed the 28.7 trillion Naira 2024 budget into law. The signing of the budget was done at a brief ceremony shortly after the president returned from Lagos after a Christmas celebration. Uh, president of the Senate, Gotwila Kwabio, as well as um, Speaker of the House of Representatives, um, Sajidin Abbas, were at the ceremony. The Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Wali Edu, uh, Minister of Budget and Economic Planning, Atiku Bagudu, the National Security Advisor, Nuhu Rabadu, were also present. Also on ground were the Chief of Staff to the President, Femi Gwajabi Amila, the National Chairman of the Ruling Party, APC, Abdullahi Ganduje, and Chairman of the Senate Appropriation Committee, Senator Olami Leko Adiola, among others. Paul Alaje, Chief Economist, SPM Professionals, is my guest on the program this evening. It joins me live from our Abuja studio. Mr. Alaje, Happy New Year. Thank you for joining us on the program. Let's begin with some reaction to the latest we're hearing from Abuja. I think it was in 2019 that former President uh, Mohamed Buhari began the January to December budget cycle, and it seems that this administration is also keeping that tradition. Just how important is this cycle for uh, budgetary performance? Well, thank you so very much for having me. First, let me say compliment of the season to all the viewers around the world. It's so important uh, for Nigeria to, uh, to continue to maintain the January to December budget cycle. The reason is because investors around the world are, are making projections for the new year already. Even local investors, have made new, they've made their new year plans. So people believe that by January, uh, there will be some new uh, these, uh, projects that should be coming from, from the part of government, even if they don't come from January because of the routine and processes that will come after uh, the budget has been signed by the government. But we know that the vision of government, financial vision of the government, is already stated in the budget. So we expect that budget uh, cycle should maintain January to December cycle. So it's good that the administration has continued to maintain that cycle of uh, signing the budget 1st of uh, January. Recall that we had a time where budgets were signed in April. There was a time, budget cycle uh, shifted to around March to February. Sometimes uh, budget was signed, once upon a time budget was signed into law in April or May, uh, the year that the budget is supposed to have its life. But we have now seen uh, at least what appears to be the end of that uh, mis, mis, uh, abnormality as government seems to have the body language of maintaining a January to December budget cycle. But is signing it on New Year's Day taking anything away from that tradition? Um, can we still count today uh, still within the cycle? Well, for me, even if it's signed on the second day or the third day of the year, we know it's still the New Year budget. I think the conversation should actually be on the amount of time that has been given to this budget by legislature. And my advice would be that the budget office should do everything possible to make the budget, which of course is what is in literature. For those of us who, are, uh, who have read about budget process and also have advised those that are actually acting, the actors in the economy, uh, we have watched them act and we have seen some level of disparity and we have compared this to what is obtainable in some parts of the world. Our advice had remained that budgets present, budgets, uh, pre preparing the budget should be completed on or before August. We can use our year review of the previous year, of the ongoing year, to make projections for the coming year. That said, by September latest, the Federal Executive Council should have pass the budget at their level, and the budget should be taken same September, latest the last day in September, to the legislature. Legislature will therefore have three full months, 90 full days, to call on any agency of government for review, where they need to add, where they need to reduce, because Nigerian National Assembly 
has long paused. Many have wondered, where does the legislature have the right to increase or reduce the budget that was signed by executive? The answer is simple. The Nigerian National Assembly is an assembly with the long pause. What that means is that it has that ability to adjust what has been submitted by executive. In fact, the assembly could even insert, in some cases, what it feels it can insert, it can delete. That is how powerful the National Assembly in Nigeria is regarding the issue of budget. As early as August, you mentioned, that's taken it to a whole new level. It's hard to tell how, how long more we have to achieve it that. But let's quickly talk about the budget performance you know, of the 2023 Appropriation Act. We saw a notable revenue shortfall with government collecting only about 5.1 trillion naira compared to the projected target of 6.4 trillion, and it resulted in a 19.5% budget deficit. How did we fare last year? Well, uh, you recall that revenue of government continued to dwindle uh, because uh, the inflow, in fact, we had that much because of subsidy removal. If subsidy had not been removed, we would not even have up to that amount. It was subsidy removal that brought party of some sort to government. And when I say government, I mean federal, uh, state, and local. That is what has improved the revenue that goes to the government. So, so, so it's even better at the end of 2022, 2023 compared to what we saw at the end of 2022 because subsidy was removed because exchange rate and um, Naira was also technically devalued. So that puts more money in the purse of the federal government. So government has more money to spend because we are discussing federal government now. So let me just put my focus just on federal government. If you have opportunity, we'll talk about the state. So, so if you look at those, we could not meet up because generally there are concerns around the economy and um, these concerns have not been holistically addressed. So if you look at half year, that's January to June, the performance was even worse compared to what the full year reports indicated. After subsidy was removed and technically what is called unification, properly speaking devaluation, we saw that the revenue of government increased sporadically. Compare what government shared in April to what is with what was shared in November is like almost times three of what was shared in April is what is shared in November. Near, near, near that amount is what government shares. So more revenue seems to come as a result of the two policies that were put together. So if that, those were not the case, honestly, so even at that, we still could not meet up with our revenue target. The question you may want to ask is that what is the assurance that we're going to meet up with revenue targets in the said 2024 budget that is open to spend over 28 trillion naira, out of which 9.9 .9 trillion we go into capital expenditure, and we have over 8 trillion into service, another 8 trillion into overhead what we call recurrent. When you put all of this together with debt service, which is another huge amount, how do we get substantial revenue to, to play its part while the remaining we come from debt? Honestly, I tell you that from what I've seen, uh, government, we need to do more in terms of first, our economic miracle, which is oil. How do we reduce tax that is happening around the Niger Delta like, area I like so that the way all you revenues it, Mr. remain? Like when you say economic miracle, the revenue projections as we've known it in the past years have been quite ambitious and often unmet. The major revenue source for government, oil revenue, um, last year generated only about 813 uh, billion naira, which is significantly lower than uh, the budgetary target of 1.3 trillion naira. Um, and then that represented a substantial variance of 37.4% 30, thereabout. Uh, but there is, there is what they call the federal government projected foreign borrowing of about 1.7 trillion naira to finance the fiscal deficit of the 2024 budget because it asked the question, how are we going to fund this? Um, the big question is whether there's a clear and effective plan to fund this budget. Uh, and um, seeing that we have a huge debt service expenditure, when you, a substantial portion of the budget continues to be allocated to service debt, uh, what happens is we have limited resources available for critical sectors. So you wonder which idea to buy. Those who say there's nothing wrong in borrowing if we're using it for capital expenditure, but borrowing is also, you know, eating very deep into our pocket. Do you agree? 
Well, for me, there are a lot of revenue windows that are not properly optimized for our country over the years, uh, which include but not limited to what is happening at the solid mineral ministry, what is happening at the maritime or what you may want to call ministry, uh, the blue ocean ministry, what is happening among the telecommunication. These three ministries and agencies of government would give us not less than 10 trillion naira additional fund if properly managed. That means, apart from what we generated last year, we should be able to increase more because now subsidy is no longer there. So it's expected that traditionally, what has given us over 5 trillion should ordinarily give us beyond 10 trillion. If you had what will be coming from few of these agencies of government I mentioned to you, as new revenue sources, we should be having close to 18, 19 trillion naira. The remaining government has been very clear that government will still go ahead to get some uh, funding in form of loans that we get into uh, the post of uh, the federal government so that we can use those to finance our several projects and also uh, overheads that government had mentioned earlier. It did. You talked about subsidy removal. Uh, the president was quoted to have said we saved about a trillion naira in one month. I mean, you, you do the simple maths, we probably should be able to even fund the new, the new year budget with how much money we're making from removing subsidy. Is it that simple? Well, saving one trillion naira in one month, the money does not go to federal government alone. So when one trillion naira is saved in a month, that money is shared by the three tiers of government, the federal, the state, and the local government. The component of federal government, when you take for the remaining two components, is now what government have to deal with. Would that alone be sufficient to finance this budget? The answer is no. The answer is not, is, is, is not sufficient. So government will still need more revenue. And you see, beyond revenue, if you really want to solve revenue problem holistically, we need to go beyond discussing revenue to now discussing investment. We need the economy to become more friendly in terms of investment. You've seen energy of Mr. President, you know, in recent time, traveling from, I mean, from India to the UAE to Germany and a few other places, just to draw in, including uh, the Saudi Arabia, just to draw in investment into Nigeria. It is when investment come that such money will impact our foreign reserve and central bank we have. It will also impact the monetary policy of central bank too. Such monies we go directly into uh, the F I mean, F FRS. We also have this fair share after a year or so or more when taxes are being paid. Thirdly, it's going to have impact on different state IRS. That is internal revenue service of state as pay and others uh, standard taxes are paid. So what we need to do if you must improve revenue is to build the environment that will make revenue happen. The president said in his broker this morning that he understands the issue of power and transition is being worked on. I only hope that we're going to get that very correctly. Unlike what happened in 2022 that we had our transmission company almost permanently epileptic. It performed a little bit uh, better this year than 2020, I mean last year compared to 2022, even though it does not mean that power outage was not predominant in 2023, there were still several power outages that we experienced in Nigeria. But the number of time it went off and the grid was completely out was, far, was a bit lower than what we saw in 2022. So energy is everything. Why you're able to speak with me and in your studio on the other side is because you have energy in you. And why I'm able to respond to you is also because I have energy. Viewers across the globe are seeing us. They can talk, they can comment, they can type, they can say something because of yes. energy. Environment that is devoid of energy is a dead environment. Therefore, we need to build an environment that is energy friendly, that we enhance growth. And when growth is enhanced, definitely revenue we, 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 we follow. Okay. So government should target revenue energy. from the area uh, of investment. That brings us to Mr. President's speech earlier today, where he talked about um, some of the fruits of his um, foreign trips, uh, specifically mentioned in the deal, um, the 
the, the semen energy project and looking forward to having that implemented soon. He did say that he's not oblivious of Nigeria's pains and that tough times never last. He says that his administration will have no excuse for poor performance as he's taken the path to serve Nigeria. He's also mentioned the policy coordination, evaluation, monitoring and de the delivery unit in the presidency which is expected to keep the appointees on their toes and, you know, have probably having some better impact on governor's output in the coming weeks. But I want us to quickly touch on um, what you think is his position on understanding the plight of Nigerians as a result of the hardship that um, the policies we saw last year have brought on many people. He said it's privy to conversations and debates about the rising cost of living, high inflation, and what he calls an unacceptably high underemployment rate. And that he knows for a fact that some Nigerians are asking if this is how his administration wants to renew their hope. He's probably seen the renewed Shege hashtag on, on X. <laughs> how, how important is this awareness and acknowledgement for this administration? First, it's important to know where the problems are so that we can know the solution to profile to the problems. When you visit a doctor, the first thing is uh, the, a doctor will try to diagnose the issue, then find a report. After that, the doctor will therefore profile solution or prescribe necessary drugs that will be taken to the pharmacy as the case may be. So he has started by saying, yes, he understands our groanings. President had mentioned that in several of his broadcasts. Now, he has also said that he now narrows it down to tough cost of living, high uh, living costs, low living standard. He tried to demonstrate some of the understanding he has about the people. And I can tell you that, fairly speaking, I think he understood that that is what even many of us that are economic watchers, economic contributors, and the mastermind of the economy, that is what our attention has been on too. And you could also mention that the president had mentioned foreign investors. He will make sure he remove all others. I was particularly excited when he mentioned that he's willing to do everything to clear all others so that investors can have uh, direct access to our economy, and which, of course, has been my point across the media platform. They need to get access directly without anyone building targets that would hinder such investment so that the effort of, so that his effort that he's trying to put in place will be achieved. And I hope that that will be done such that every other person pulling obstacle around the, around the government and the key appointee of government that uh, the people that may be around them pulling obstacle can quickly be removed such that we can have direct access to provide necessary support for our economy. So how will all of this come? Nigerians want to see that difference. I know Mr. President did a national broker, I think that was 31st of July, 2023, where it said it's going to support with, I think, about 75 billion naira. And I quickly responded to that immediately after the broadcast and also made it uh, on pages of newspaper that the president may look at increasing that number, maybe to cut uh, uh, maybe to triple it or to even multiply that by two because that amount for the population we have, yeah, is something if it's concentrated in a fewer sector, but to enlarge it in a broad sector may not have so much impact. The governor shared rights, you know, as a, as a form of force support by the president. Governor shared rights to, to, to their citizens. Now, when that was shared, where is the impact? Everybody see putting pressure that the policy of government is not impacting them directly. Can we quickly be having CNGs instead of sharing rice? Can the doctor make CNG, I mean, can the government make CNG available at their state level so that the impact will reduce? The high point again is that the president had mentioned that minimum wage will be increased. By how much? Well, that is not, is not is yet to let the house of the bag. But we are, we, we are, we are insinuating. Maybe to 60 or 80 or 100,000. For me, I think between 80 to 100,000 is what we should be looking at. My fear is that that will further induce inflation to go higher. We're already at 28%, you know, year on year. But that may draw inflation to go higher. But should we say because of inflation, our people should see, say, in hunger, penury, and deprivation? Or should we say by paying them, those who are not working with federal government, those who are not working with state government, what will they get? That is why I want to place a call on labor leaders to have a constructive engagement with the government. Now that Mr. President has made this pronouncement, 
how do they quickly get so that all that are concerned, especially those that are working at the state level and the private sector level and the federal government level, this implementation can be as soon as possible. Because we it also, know that it, after the it statement also committee like level... Yes, Mr. Alaje, that um, will also you know, bring to mind how long this tripartite you know, uh, configuration of meetings will take and how, how long more it will take for an actual you know, change to be done or increment to be done in this regard. Talking about national broadcast, give it to the president. He knows how to say the right words and speak to the heart of the people. But some are saying uh, with seven months uh, you know, done in this administration, he may have to now start doing more than just talking and matching his words with action. He mentioned this morning that this year there are plans to restart local refining of petroleum products with Potakot refinery and Dangote refinery coming on stream. Um, but my question really to you, and I want you to help us understand this, will this impact significantly on the amount paid for Petro per litre? Because that's perhaps what Nigerians are concerned about right now. Well, I, I've heard uh, people saying that when this refinery come on board, it will not affect what you are paying per liter. I dare tell you that it is not just petrol that we affect, it will affect your overall effects. If you have crude available here, what I still don't understand is why can't we supply crude to Dangote? His refinery is close to our, our crude. It will be easier and shorter for him. Governments add shares in Dangote refineries. Why can't we make those petrol that is stolen available for Dangote to use? Even if we need to give him at a discount for the purpose of balancing the dislocation in our economy right now. Even if we need to sell to Dangote and Naira instead of putting further pressure on the dollar. Right in our backyard are crude, right in front of the building is refinery. Can we align instead of following the unnecessary protocol? So for Dangote to go outside the country, import his crude, refine his crude, then sell to us or sell to the rest of the world. So can't we give Dangote from what is available in our, in our, in our own, uh, uh, within different oil fields, and government have a special arrangement with the owners of this field, such that even if he has to pay in Naira, what is important to us is the cost of energy in Nigeria is really getting high. But if we can find a balance to this for private refinery to become functional eventually, and uh, the government refinery uh, in Podakot, and I've always said that government have no business maintaining those refineries. The earlier we, we, we reduce the interest of government by at least 60% and allow government to own 40%, bring private sector to own the remaining 60% for efficiency, effectiveness, and maximum optimal output of this refinery, the better for us as a nation. So in short, you're saying that if we can get the local refineries back to, you know, active and working capacity, we'll pay less for petrol. Did I hear you clearly? You will pay, you will pay less for petrol. Not only that will you pay less for petrol, it will reduce pressure on the, on, on the dollar, on exchange rate. And you can check. For people watching us today, they are using phones, whether Android or iOS, check. It is imported. People that wear clothes, majority of their fabric are imported. Use any example, including cameras that is before me is imported. It is not that Nigerians don't want to buy made in Nigeria. Perhaps we just don't have the technology right now. So if we are going to depend on the rest of the world to import, what determines how much the cost, one of the critical components of costing of what we import to Nigeria is exchange rate. We should not put pressure on that exchange rate right now. So in the medium term, you are going to see some reduction. I'm not saying it's going to be back at 189. No. But you will see some reduction, at least between 20 to 35% reduction in what people are paying right now. That will also help Naira to find its level against the dollar. Instead of today is 1,100, uh, it's 800. What economics are concerned about, what we are concerned about is stability. It's not really the figure. But you see, when the figure is too high, it also has implication on people living standard. Living standard is a concern too. Because of that, we now need to mind what the number is saying as well. So, so, so making those refinery work, the argument again, argument that cannot further be debated, is that it will have impact on foreign exchange. 
is that it's going to have impact on logistics, the time of travel, the cost of in bringing it in, it will definitely have impact. Anyone that says that impact will be neutral, I think is not telling us, the com it's not giving us the complete information. You know, the longer and short of all this conversation, all the grammar that we have spoken is that Nigerians want to see their life better. They want to be able to, you know, see some improvement in their purchase in power and see the materialization, you know, all of these promises materialize in the marketplace. We're looking forward to it and we hope it happens sometime this year. Paul Alaje is Chief Economist with SPM Professionals. He joined us live from Arabuda Studio. Good to see you, Paul. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for having me. That's our show today, the first in 2024. Thank you for joining us. We're back tomorrow uh, with another fresh episode. I am Nifemi Ogunto Yeh.